This is my stuffed beef tenderloin with the beautiful winter flavors of dry cranberry, date, some fresh thyme, sage. Ooh. And we're gonna make it very easy for you to cook at home. So starting with the beef tenderloin. This is the center cut portion of the tenderloin, which we are gonna butterfly and stuff. Mm. Okay, first, Jeffrey, you're gonna sue for me. I gotta chop this sage and mince uh, these fresh shots. That's shots. it? That's all you need to do. I just need Take you to buy time, me. Take your time, Jeezy. Just I just want you to buy the vibes. Me. I want the vibes okay. from you, all right? <laughs> so here's our tenderloin, right? You want to make sure that silver skin is off. It's nicely trimmed. And we're going to butterfly. So you want a sharp boning knife. And all we're going to do is about a half of an inch from the, uh, the bottom. We're going to start using that knife, all right? This is kind of partially done. You can have your butcher do this. But all you're going to do is make a quick little nice even cut like that. And then when you get to the end here, you just kind of splay it open a little more so it's like a book. Please think of it like a paper towel roll that I'm unrolling. Yeah. Nice. Before we start on our stuffing, which I got going here, let me turn this on. I got some shallots and some butter just at a gentle uh, simmer here. Sweat those out. To this, I'm going to add some dates. Nice uh, I love dates. dates. Real nice and sweetness and for some tartness, some dried cranberries. And these are all kind of pantry pulls right here. Very easy. We're going to get these kind of activated in the oils, help marry those flavors of the shallot and the sweetness and all that. We're going to add some thyme, fresh thyme. I love thyme. And, and our next ingredient, once this kind of starts getting, uh, getting all broken down and everything, can I have that sage right now, please? We're going to add that right in there. And when the sage hits the butter and the shallots and all that, just like holidays. holiday magic happens, yeah. right? All right, beautiful. Once we get all those uh, aromatics and nuts sweated out, we're going to add some dry sherry. Oh. Oh. And this is going to help kind of create almost like a, a paste, if you will. So we're going to simmer this for about 5, 10 minutes in it, until it turns into this consistency right here, right? Everything's bloomed. Those cranberries have plumped up. The dates have plumped up. So we got all those flavors, sweet, tart. And we got our butterfly tenderloin here, which we're going to season the inside of it first. Mm. Don't forget this step. You want top to, top to bottom seasoning, a little salt and pepper. And we'll get the outside in a minute. It's like a brujol. Almost mm -hmm. crust to crust it. It is like a fancy brujol. You know, minus flank steak, minus breadcrumbs yeah. and Italian seasonings and all that. We're going a little more holiday forward here. Yeah. So you want to leave a little bit of uh, give here on the end, about a half of an inch, because we are going to be rolling this up. We don't want too much spilling out. Next comes, I need some crunch in this. Yeah. Another more almost Middle Eastern kind of um, uh, Mediterranean flair to this. Some chopped Marcona almonds. Oh, interesting. Right? So the Marcona Just, almond is from Spain, and you know a California almond is usually a little longer and drier, and the Marcona buttery. has more oils to it. It's shorter. It's called the queen of almonds. So now we're gonna roll it up just like you would a pinwheel or whatever. Now Jeffrey, you can grab some of that yeah, thyme for me, and just we're going to. It's okay if some spill, and we're gonna clean it up before it goes in the oven. And instead of doing like one long, no, those, uh, I don't th like that. This is easier to cut with. It presents better. I you get to you. actually, how many people in your family just do one tie per people, and you yeah, got perfect yeah. slices, right. and you have them dealing with taking the twine off. <laughs> Beautiful. So uh, we're gonna do that. Just keep doing that, yeah, Jeffrey. Okay. Please. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. But after it's done, so this one, damn, Jeffrey, you can do a little more. But since there's four of us, I did four. Four ties on that okay. one. That's, that's it, right? It's kind of protruding. We're going to season the outside. Right? Don't neglect it. We haven't hit the outside yet. A little salt and pepper on there. And we got our oven set at 225. It's going to go in there for about two hours till it hits 120, 125. Really low and slow method. A lot of times this method is applied to like prime rib roast and stuff like that where you want to get top to bottom, even medium rare. And you can't really cook this over medium rare. It's, uh, it's a tenderloin. You want to treat her gently. Cook it to medium rare is perfect. Right? Not a lot of fat in here, but a ton of flavor and real soft, nice meat. So this is going in the oven, 225, about two hours. Keep an eye on it. Keep your thermometer ready. I got one here that's been in the oven for about an hour, 45 minutes. I took its temp. It's about 122, 123. That's perfect. We just want to sear it now. We don't want to cook it anymore. We just want to put some color on that outside. Because even though we cook this perfectly, all of our stuffing is heated through. It's all melded with the meat and everything. It's 125. We do want to create that crust that we all love on a tenderloin. And what's better than to impart that color on there? Butter. 
Yes. Oh. You can literally tell Careful. how juicy it's gonna be just by the, just how it looks. There you go. Hey. Yes. Yeah. All right, I got another one here for us because I don't want to wait around anymore. I know you guys are hungry. <laughs> yes, we are. A beauty of this method when you go low and slow like that in the oven, you don't really need to let it rest because it's essentially been resting That's for two right. hours in there, but this one is rested and I'm ready to carve. Very little shrinkage. Very little shrinkage, because we didn't, it didn't seize up when it hit a super piping hot oven or a grill or whatever. Right now, again, you could cut this off, but I like cutting it with it on, and you can always, uh, let's see. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Money shot. Man, that smells so good. I'm going to tear this up. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to find Sonny for the next hour. It's only gonna take two minutes. Man, Jeff, that looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. my goodness. Nice. Get that guy, I don't want any. I love the ends too, right? I got one more here. A little horseradish cream sauce. Oh. Do it! Look at that. There's a place I like to go that has a chocolate fountain and prime rib. Look at that, I even did some fancy stuff for you, that. buddy. And look at, boom, put that Buffet. right in there. And then... Happy holidays! Your plating flair is on a 10. Well, thank you. Just be careful of the strings in there, obviously. You oh. do want to cut them for your guests, but look at I, that. I, I believe you guys can handle it. Tender, Jeff. Tenderoni. The addition of the fat that's naturally in a filet mignon, really puts us over the edge.